Well, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. I'm coming to you just a little bit earlier than usual because I've got to hit the road early today. But thank you for joining me. We're in Psalm 18, Psalm 18 today. A very beautiful and wonderful psalm. Won't read all of it, but just a little bit to get our day started. Well, thank you for joining me. This is one of those psalms you will actually find in two places in the Bible, not only in Israel's hymn book in the Psalms, but you will also find it in 2 Samuel 22 as one that the Holy Spirit inspired David to repeat. It's not exact word for word, but in a little different fashion. So uh, compare those two as you're doing your reading this morning. Read Psalm 18, then go read 2 Samuel 22 and hear the story behind it. Uh, as the subtitle might say, if you have one of those in your Bible, it says that this is when David spoke the words of this song to the Lord on the day that the Lord rescued him from the grasp of all his enemies and from the power of Saul. Look at it together with me. I'm going to read it from the Christian Standard Bible this morning. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock, where I seek refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I was saved from my enemies. The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress. And I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Now, I can go ahead and read the rest of it. You do that as you have time, but I just want to focus this morning on what is our God to us and how he is our source of strength in time of weakness. Now, for many of you, especially maybe if you're a young Christian, you thought, well, I was supposed to surrender my life to the Lord and everything was going to be wonderful after that, right? No more problems, no more pain, no more suffering. It's just kind of a little bit of heaven on earth. Well, I'm sorry you were deceived, but that's never part of the bargain. Matter of fact, what happened when you became a Christian is you found yourself at odds with a brand new enemy someone who doesn't like you at all. That is Satan and his horde of demons. And he not only does not like you, it's kind of like a Hatfields and McCoy thing. You may not be trying to antagonize him, but you are now a member of the wrong family. So it means he's coming after you. Now, if you want to get an idea of how this works, I, I love a little book by uh, Robert Morgan entitled Red Sea Rules. He gives you 10 rules for living based on what the Israelites were going through as they had their backs against the Red Sea and they were running from Pharaoh. Listen under Red Sea Rule number three, one of my favorite passages from his book. He talks about this struggle that you and I have as believers because we're in opposition to the plans of Satan. He says, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ forgives our sins and resolves our guilt. His resurrection frees us from the fear of death and it satisfies our need for eternal significance and happiness. The presence of the Lord surrounds us while the promises of the Bible sustain us. His grace heals our whip wounds, even. Jesus said, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. But Satan doesn't surrender his prey without a fight. He comes racing after the converted soul, chariot wheels churning in the dust, seeking to discourage you, to defeat you. He pursues you with the intensity of Pharaoh. He may use your old friends, a spot of persecution perhaps, or discouraging responses by your own family. He may show you a hypocrite in the church or afflict you with a general slacking of zeal. He may launch a missile of temptation right at your heart or fire a volley of trials and troubles into your life. He tries to trap you in difficulty, to entangle you in trouble, to corner you in an impossible situation, to lure you into temptation. If you're in a tough situation right now, maybe you're suffering pain, worry, anguish, or illness, the devil is undoubtedly behind it to a greater or a lesser degree. But here's the key and here's the rule. 
Acknowledge Satan's activity, but don't be intimidated by him. You can resist him in the power of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. In fact, our commander-in-chief enjoins you to such resistance. And, uh, you know, that's part of the point of this particular rule and the Red Sea rules is acknowledge your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. Acknowledge your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. And he talks about at a time like this when you're dealing with struggles, to be able to recite Scripture, have it memorized, and be able to throw it back as an attack against Satan. Because he says, when we rebuff the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, when we stand our ground, when we trust, resist all of his wiles and claim victory of faith, when we shake off discouragement in the name of the Lord, then Satan falls from heaven faster than lightning and he's drowned in the Red Sea in the blood of Jesus Christ. I think that's a beautiful picture today. And I can't think of a psalm that better points us to our focus on the Lord and what he is for us. So today, if you're feeling a little bit weak, look at verse 1. I love you, Lord, my strength. Put all your weakness in the hands of Jesus today. I love you, Lord, my strength. Are you feeling like you're standing on shaky ground? Look at verse 2. The Lord is my rock. Do you need a place to just hide and chill out and rest and recover? The Lord is my fortress. Do you need someone to come and rescue you from the situation you've gotten yourself in? Look, the Lord is my deliverer. <laughs> he is my God. Who do you really worship? Who do you go to? It's Him. He is my rock where I seek refuge. Do you need protection from the fiery darts of the enemy? My shield and the horn of my salvation. Remember who saved you and what He went through to accomplish that. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Not only that, look what else it says about him. He's not only my rock where I seek refuge and my shield, he's the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved from my enemies. Call on the Lord today. You'll be glad that you did. I don't care what kind of a fix you're in. Even if you're embarrassed about it, you say, Lord, I hate to talk to the Lord about this because you know, He's warned me. I know better and I've gotten myself into this fix. All the more reason to call on the name of the Lord and find forgiveness if you've broken fellowship, restoration, and find His strength to get you through. Well, that's a beautiful psalm to start our day on. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord, and you'll join me again tomorrow for just a little bit of encouragement to start your day and hopefully get you excited about studying the Word and see the power that it has in your life. So join us again tomorrow. Wake up in the Word. God bless you.